Hello and welcome to Unit 14 Lesson 1, Editing Basics and Video Terminology. My name is Dina and here I will be teaching you the very basics of video editing. Before we get into actually editing video in Vegas Pro 18, I would like to go over some universal editing basics and video terminology. These terms will help you better understand what video making is as a whole and make it easier to describe and sort through all of your footage. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So Vegas, like most editing software nowadays, is for NLE or non-linear editing. That means you can edit non-linearly. <laughs> um, let me explain what I mean. Back in the day, when movies were still made with actual film and tapes, the only way you could edit was to do it all in the correct order. Back then, you had to actually cut and glue the film reels together. You had to start from the very beginning and then add in your edits in the order you wanted it to appear in. This was called linear editing because you had to follow the timeline and sequence and could not jump around. Linear editing is much more time consuming and much more tedious. Nowadays, with computers and digital files, everything is much more flexible. You can edit whatever piece of footage you want to, move things around as much as you want, and add much more fun transitions, special effects, and audio. Most video editing nowadays is non-linear and uses an NLE software like Vegas. Next, I would like to talk about frames. You might commonly use frames to showcase a picture or a painting, right? So a frame is usually for a still image, and that is still true when we talk about video. All videos are actually just lots of photos taken very quickly one after another, and then played together to create the illusion of movement. This is how all animation works too, except in animation, you usually have to draw out each photo instead of taking a picture. For this illusion of motion to work and look smooth, just like real life, there needs to be at least 24 frames or photos per second. You can get away with 12 frames per second, but the less frames you have, the more choppy it will look. The standard for feature film movies is 24 frames per second, but for video, it sort of varies by location. Generally speaking, the European standard is 25 frames per second, and places like the USA, Japan, and Taiwan usually have 29.97 frames per second. Of course, these are not the only numbers. For a super smooth effect, you can use 60 frames per second. If something is shot in slow motion, that often means it is actually hundreds of frames per second and then played back at a slower, regular speed. The opposite would be something like a time lapse, which covers a lot of time and looks like everything is sped up. It is actually taking photos very slowly. For example, a time lapse could be taking one photo per minute and then playing them back at a regular FPS. For the most part, if you are shooting regular video, the only number you need to remember is 24. Anything that is close to 24 frames per second, including 25, 29.97, or 30, will look like what you normally see online and on TV. All right, now I would like to introduce shots and camera framing. So let's look at the word frame again. A frame is the border of a picture, right? It creates a clear space for your object of focus to be inside of. So, when you frame your camera shot, that means you decide what will be visible on the screen in the end. Where are the borders of your shot? What needs to be inside of the frame? And where inside the frame do you put it? These different decisions create different types of shots. Here, we will talk about some of the most common shots. An establishing shot, well, establishes the scene. It shows the setting and lets the audience know where your story is taking place. This makes it an extreme wide shot because it shows a lot of things at once. So this shot here in our marketing promo 
is an establishing shot because it shows the whole lab, giving you an overall idea of where we are without going into too much detail. Establishing shots are usually at the beginning of the story and at the beginning of scene changes, so people know where you are and are not confused. Next, as we pull in a little closer, is the long shot or wide shot. The wide shot shows the entirety of your subject and may include some of the background and setting as well. For these next examples, our subject is our actors. So a wide shot for our actors means showing them completely head to toe. A medium shot pulls in closer and shows about half of our subject. For our actors, that means about waist up. This gives more details on their face and gestures, but still lets us know where they are. Finally, a close-up zooms in, you guessed it, even closer. A close-up usually is just the face or from shoulders upwards. It can also be used to show specific details of an object or other part. For example, here the close-up is on our actor's hand and the microphone, as he pushes the microphone up towards the ceiling. This action, moving the microphone up, is the main focus and what we need to show. We do not need to see the whole room or their faces and bodies here. Therefore, we can use a close-up to direct viewers towards the specific detail. Close-ups are very useful for this, to show exactly what we want the audience to see and focus on. Beyond the basic wide, medium, and close-up shots, I'd like to introduce two other common shots that are used often when people or characters are involved. The first is the over-the-shoulder shot. This is mostly used during a conversation between people. The camera looks like it is perched on or right behind the shoulder of a person and is pointed towards the subject. The subject could be talking or showing some sort of reaction that is important. This shot shows the direction you should be looking in and who to focus on. It makes you feel like you are the person in the scene directly interacting with the subject. Second is the POV shot. POV stands for point of view. This one places you directly into the shoes of a character on screen, showing exactly what they are seeing as if you are looking through their eyes. So for example, when our actress here is looking up and at the lab, we show those shots of the lab equipment as her point of view. Okay, so after these shot types, I want to talk about some types of camera movement too. A shot is a single continuous take from the camera, and the camera can move during a shot too. The easiest and most common ones are the first three here. Pan, tilt, and zoom. Panning the camera means the camera stays on a fixed point, like a tripod, but moves from side to side. Tilting is also from a fixed point, and moves up or down. Sort of like if you were nodding your head. Honestly, panning and tilting feel as if you were actually turning your head to look around, actually. And zooming means to adjust the camera lens so it looks like you are getting closer or further away to the subject. In panning, tilting, and zooming, the camera doesn't move. For the bottom three here, the camera actually moves instead of being stationary. We use some of these in our marketing promo, so I'd like to discuss them as well. A tracking shot moves alongside with what you're recording, usually horizontally. A dolly shot actually moves towards or away from the subject instead of using the camera zoom function. Zooming can make the quality of your image worse, so this is a good way to keep the high quality while also moving in on your subject. It's called a dolly shot because a dolly is a type of equipment. It's a special wheeled cart, like putting a tripod on wheels or on a track. The wheels help the smooth movement when you're moving towards or further from what you're recording. Last, the following shot follows your subject wherever they go. There is special equipment to help make sure the movement is smooth too, like steady cams and gimbals, but we won't get into that because most regular people don't have those. 
Lastly, I'd like to bring up a couple cuts you will see and use in editing. The camera might move during a shot, but as long as it is still one continuous take, it is considered one shot. From the moment you press record to the moment you press stop recording, that's one shot. A cut is where you switch between two different shots or break one shot into two. It's that simple. One of the most common shots you may have seen online, especially in YouTube videos like vlogs, is the jump cut. A jump cut is when you cut out something from the middle of the same shot. That means that the frame and subject are usually in the same place, making it look like they have suddenly jumped forward in time. It's often used in vlogs because um, maybe you made a mistake when saying a sentence, but didn't want to start the whole video over. So you just take one long shot, then cut out the mistake and keep the good parts. A cutaway shot is when you interrupt a continuous shot by inserting a shot of something else. Usually you cut back to the original shot afterwards. This is how B-roll works to help illustrate what we are talking about. There will be more on B-roll in Unit 15, so don't worry. You can also do lots of different transitions in between cuts, but we will get to that later as well. I'm sure all of these terms will all get repeated again and again during the rest of the lessons, so don't worry too much if this seems like too much information at once. Now that we have some of the vocabulary, we can talk about actually editing and building your video. I'll see you in the next lesson! Bye!